Hi there, this is Alfie Wattam. I'm a technology recruiter in London and the host of the London Tech Talks recruitment podcast on LinkedIn. Uh, today I'm joined by Artem and we're going to be talking about a few different things. And for the, for the viewers, um, Artem, can you give them a bit of a, a summary as to who you are and, and what you're working on? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Alfie, for inviting. Uh, well, my background started in software development. I was a software developer in, in Belarus. I was working for mostly health tech sector. I spent around uh, five years in health. I uh, was working as a Java developer. Then, you know, was doing technical leadership over, over a small team. We worked on healthcare projects from electronic patient record systems in the U.S. to I did an audit of national narrow donor transplant system, which was very interesting. And then I started, uh, kind of got on the startup train. I was one of the third, I was a third engineer of this company called Urgently. They're now, you know, a market leader in roadside assistance. Uh, and that was very exciting. That was very different from my experience and big corporate we obviously both experiences are great i i really like that i had both and they're equally you know helped me uh but after that after the, the speed and impact i had in a startup i decided that i want to try and run my own business so as an engineer i didn't have much business experience and knowledge about anything else apart from development so i decided to had have some time to you know think get educated. So I applied for a few scholarships, got an achieving scholarship from the UK government and went to UCL Business School, did a technology entrepreneurship master's there, uh, which was excellent. It was such a wide breadth of people and it just was incredible. So, and after that, we, I've, we've met with my current co-founder, Kit, who was an a &E doctor in NHS and we found, you know, a shared passion in, um, in health. And we started a company it used to be called Dr. Focus, but now it's called Prudentially. Mm -hmm. We are around four years uh, since we started it. We've you know raised multiple rounds. We have a team of around 40 people, most of whom are engineers. And we, we recently helped NHS with um, NHS 111 to hire and verify retired GPs. We, in two weeks, we kind of helped NHS to recruit around 3,000 GPs, which was kind of crazy mm. uh, everyone was on the calls verifying doctors including me uh so yeah now we're uh, looking to grow so we're quickly expanding the company we are getting new new enterprise customers so yeah that's that's kind of briefly my story brilliant could, could you just tell us a little bit more about credentially uh, aka doctor focused yeah so credentially is a is a SaaS platform that uh, sits in the, on the intersection between HR and uh, clinical compliance. So we help uh, with this trend of um, gig economy, where we see Uber and Deliveroo people work part-time in many places. We see that in, in health. So there are fewer doctors, a growing population that is older. So it's more efficient for doctors, someone who's a, a very experienced consultant, to work to cover a procedure in one hospital, which really requires that high level expertise, but then move somewhere else and, and leave something more simpler to, you know, less jun more junior staff. Uh, but it is very, very complicated for doctors to, to get practicing privileges. So from, from the time when a recruiter uh, contacts them till the moment when they can practice. Sometimes it take up to three months, which is prohibitively long, and it's it's a burdensome process. They need to sub submit like ten to fifteen pieces of evidence, documents. Right. It's just a really long and such a qualified and rare professionals where we really need them spending time on this paperwork, every single time they have to go through it again and again, it's just mental. So our solution creates a single platform, kind of like LinkedIn plus PayPal. So we verify all of their credentials, license, uh, right to work, and visas, and uh, police checks, DBS, uh, qualifications. We verified once with one provider, automating a lot of it. We connect with different government bodies, 
and we create them a medic passport, which they can uh, then use and apply for other jobs, but they can in one click have that trusted profile and they don't have to go through that paperwork again. So we, you know, in a matter of two weeks, we can do the first employment and the second and third employment we do in a matter of two, three days, depending on the difference in compliance. So we are a SaaS company. We don't provide recruitment service. We don't, you know, share doctor's profile like your PayPal wouldn't share your card to sell yeah. off. Yeah. We enable hospitals to hire and, you know, track compliance and we enable doctors to apply and switch jobs quickly. Got it. More of a platform. I understand. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so obviously we're recording this um, at and during lockdown, um, or just as we're coming out of it, uh, at least. Um, what's your lockdown experience been like? Uh, it's been great. Well, I'm originally from Belarus, so flew back home to spend some time with family. Um, yeah. When just before the, the lockdown started in the UK, and we spent there around two months. So I've just you know was walking in the woods with my family and you know trying to spend time you know not much socializing missed my birthday it's kind of alone which was very sad but <laughs> well, no, uh, uh it was some time ago now yeah but, but uh, then we returned here and uh, i really enjoy it now in in london you know i, I enjoy working from home i did myself a nice setup uh definitely don't spend as much time on commutes uh and i found that we were to be honest as uh uh as a business owner i was a bit scared that people would be you know less productive or be as you know switched on working yeah. remotely but we found the opposite and that's the same i'm talking to all my friends both in big corporate and the startups everyone finding that you know it works just fine probably better remotely for everyone so i think we're gonna you know keep this uh you know flexible working from home policy indefinitely because i i don't see why why to stop this well there's a lot of perks i mean as long as the staff are productive then obviously you know less money on office space better for the environment less stress commuting, obviously better. And, um, so a lot of you know, recent IT graduates um, and sort of fresh, you know, junior developers at, and they like to watch these videos. Um, obviously, in the industry for, for quite a while. Have you got any advice for those people that are just starting out in their sort of tech careers? Oh, well, I think the first, I, I'll just reiterate the advice that I got from one of my, yeah. one of my ment early mentors and early kind of managers and bosses and he said, you know, first position should be about money, should be about experience and perspective. So think a few steps in advance if you don't just think about like right now, the, the compensation you get right now, think about what it will give you and where can you get from there in like three years and mm. think about it financially, you know, a little bit longer term. Yeah. Uh, I personally got both experience from big companies like you know nasdaq listed enterprises and startups and i think you need both to be honest it's pretty tough in startups maybe tough if you don't have enough expertise it seems hectic and uh there are there are difficult things about smaller companies so i'd probably suggest to just get a little bit expertise and structure in your head in advance and go to something bigger but then obviously you start getting bored there and not having enough flexibility and freedom and speed oh, yeah. then it's it's a good move to go to a smaller company where you'll have more space to grow and the speed would be higher yeah no, that's good advice and I, I do hear that quite a lot in that you know it's good to get experience working in both environments both the, the fast-growing chaotic startup and as well as the well-structured uh, you know big corporation and absolutely all right. So look, looking forward into the, the future, um, Atom, um, are there any cutting edge technologies or futuristic you know, platforms or tools or technologies which you're excited about? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that um, AI is getting commoditized. We've, everyone we've been talking about AI, AI. Yeah. But now we, we just see that how, how affordable and accessible it is. Uh, I'm not an AI expert, but we are able to, you know, utilize it a lot in areas from our core functionality to 
uh, security like heuristics and you know many many vendors are using it and, and you're just finding how how effective it is and how easy it is now to use and I think it's just a start it's uh, I remember this time when I just started a uni and uh, there is this report called uh, KPC Kleiner Kleiner Perkins I think they, they do okay. internet trends um, yeah, sure. guide yeah so I've read that and it was saying everything that you're using on your computer is going to be in the cloud your music your videos and I was like no way no way no would trust that. like no it's not going to happen and it happened yeah, yeah. so I think we're at that stage where it started happening with AI but like uh, you know equally blockchain so I think in the current in the current state of blockchain it's very inefficient you know I have you, if you tried ever to trade Bitcoin, it's the, the both roles for which it was made to make it quick, to make it safe and to make it, you know, easy. So to transfer hundred pounds worth of Bitcoin, it takes half an hour to verify. Yeah. One transaction costs eight pounds. The difference between, you know, exchange rates is so, the margin is so huge. And then it's very unfriendly, you know, but it's not sustainable. Uh, it just burns a lot of unnecessary amounts of electricity and all the power, it was supposed to be decentralized, but all the power is now in the, in the hands of few miners who like, you know, so it com it's a complete fail, the, the Bitcoin itself and all the current cryptocurrencies, I don't believe them, but the technology itself, there are very, very interesting new kind of second wave Bitcoin uh, startups like Chia, for example, it was founded by a uh, founder of BitTorrent. And you know, it's like it's the most successful distributed protocol in the internet. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to, it's, it's going to use zero electricity. It's going to use zero compute power. It's completely like revolutionary. And you know, the best investors are behind it, like uh, Sequoia and, you know, and Reason Horowitz. So, that's something to look out for. Uh, and I think CRISPR in medicine, it's probably a little bit longer term, but the ability to, you know, edit genes and just yes. programming health is something dangerous, but something in incredibly powerful. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, that, 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 that's fascinating when you start getting down um, that angle. But I, I do agree that, that the whole crypto um, area, um, you know, double edged sword in, in many respects. And, and you know, the, the actual underlying um, blockchain technology is, is incredible and has unlimited potential that the way it's been applied, you know, the past couple of years might not be perfect. But, you know, there are a few things which are starting to um, head in a, in a better direction. I mean, I, I, um, it's going to take a long time. It's more than 10 years since Bitcoin was invented yeah we're still probably more five to ten years more since it's going to be adopted mm. and don't go for the hype yes because i've with this startup i've been through cup already couple of blockchain mania when everyone was investing in bitcoin yeah years ago ai and then everyone is running and saying oh we're building ai or we we do i wouldn't suggest going for the you know the shiny thing unless you're you know you are an expert in this and you know specific application like don't go in it for the sake of it think about fundamentals and the value you bring to any yeah. customer don't think about technology in, in isolation yeah that's good advice brilliant well thanks so much for having this quick um chat um atom um, I will tag you on LinkedIn when it comes out in a few days um, if people have questions can they reach out and and drop you a message yeah, 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 sure. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for watching, everybody, and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. See you. Bye-bye.